Matthew, thanks so much for tonight. Um, I certainly lot, learned a lot more about how to do effective email and EDM campaigns. One of the things that we spoke a lot about was uh, the importance of building a relationship with your database and capturing more and more data from your database as the relationship progresses. With EDM, you capture a first name and then an email address. How do you build and collect more data as the relationship progresses? It's, data collection is very much a, a juggling act. You don't want to create that friction and anxiety up front when you don't have the relationship. So indeed, first name and email address is probably the safest way to go. For example, if you want someone's date of birth, is that personal, don't ask it for them up front. Ask it for them once they've volunteered something to begin with. And then tell them, with the, we're asking for your birth information so we can send you a 20% off voucher with when your date of birth comes around. So take uh, full benefit of that, that first opportunity when you have people's attention. Ask for a bit more information. Then over time use things like surveys and update profile campaigns to, to build on that. And a, a great tip when you go back and, uh, and do ask for more information is to incentivize, but use the incentive to act as actually um, as part of the data collection process. So when you're asking people what are your personal interests, use those personal int interests to guide you on what sort of incentives that you should offer in the future when asking for more information. Okay. Platforms like uh, Vision 6 and other email marketing campaigns obviously are both the creative vehicle as well as the data capture and data storage house. Um, as you collect more and more data, whether it's purchasing history or survey answers, can platforms like Vision 6 um, continue to integrate that information so that you can then provide those customised campaigns? I think the answer, well the key to that is integration. Um, a platform like Vision 6 allows you to upload whatever information and send your campaigns and so on, but it, that's probably not the best place to be storing your customer data on an ongoing basis. It's not a, a CRM solution as, as such, but it, you certainly should be looking to integrate that, that information into uh, whatever platform you do use on a day-to-day -day business. Yeah. Matthew, thank you so much. Um, it was an interesting conversation and I did say at the outset, oh, I'm a little bit nervous about this conversation. Um, I've learnt a lot about how to do far more effective EDMs. So thanks so much for your time this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Nick, thank you. That was a very interesting conversation and you certainly had a, a great deal of depth and substance to the conversation. One of the comments that you made, throwaway line perhaps, but you said that paper was sexy in a direct marketing campaign. Can you tell us more? Paper is sexy, the way it feels, the way that it um, evokes memory from the texture, what's printed on it. Uh, for instance, if we're doing a, um, a communication piece that is uh, very um, sensual, I'll use a paper stock that feels sensual. Even our business cards, we've actually got a really cool texture on it to create a conversation. It feels like skin. So there's different ways that I can use paper, or well, anyone could use paper, to add value and enhance a piece of communication. Okay, cool. Um, so are you saying then that direct mail, as in snail mail, is a more effective channel these days? An email is really easy to delete. But a piece of communication that is engaging and evocative, um, whether it be um, industrial, whether it be sensual, uh, that makes it harder for someone to, to, to put it down. We have uh, created a chocolate-scented credit card. Which and I haven't received this because? So it looks like a block of chocolate. It has a bite mark out of the corner of it. And we're looking at the technology to micro-encapsulate the chocolate scent into the card itself. So every time that you touch and use that card, you're embodied with the smell of chocolate which is going to make you relate to the brand that supplied that card in a totally different way. You've stumped me. I have no words for that. So with that, I'm going to say, Nick, thank you so much for your time, expertise and insights tonight. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on the panel and I really look forward to our next encounter in terms of uh, how we make direct marketing really pop. And paper is sexy. Okay. Thanks, Neil. That was a really juicy conversation around direct marketing and I must admit I am uh, much more educated now than I was at the beginning of the conversation. Um, one of the things that has really struck me is the market itself is now exploding socially. We're doing much more on Twitter, on Facebook, etc. And, and part of that is so much around the viral, yet viral has always existed. Can you tell me in the direct traditional market, how are you guys making sure that your message is going viral? 
Yeah, that's a really good question because the uh, the new channels that are coming out is really just different ways of, of people talking over the back fence. So um, so for us, a big part of it is, is uh, talking to our customers, finding out the ones that are perhaps the happiest and, uh, and those are the best influencers and getting them to influence others. But we also go out and, uh, and, and work with, um, you know, maybe industry groups and, uh, and organisations like that that are known to be, uh, to be strong influencers as well. So it's, it's certainly a big area for us and it's perhaps um, from a, uh, uh, a marketing point of view, it's this frontier, or from a data-driven point of view, it's the next frontier because it's very difficult to get the names and details of influencers, as you can imagine. In the old days, I can still remember receiving direct mail pieces where it said, if you, if you know of anyone who you would think would like to receive this catalogue, please give us, you know, please fill out this form and pass it on. Yes. How, how are you doing it now? Um, there are a few ways that we're exploring and that's uh, you know liking on Facebook and things like that but the you know probably the best example that I would be using at this point in time is uh, is just making a send to the to a friend button on an email and just allowing them to uh, to send that on to somebody that they um, they know either in the organization or a friend of theirs Fantastic. Neil, thank you so much for your time tonight and for your insights. Um, as I said at the beginning, I did start out as a direct sceptic, not anymore. And um, yeah, I really appreciate your case studies and your time this evening. Great. Thanks very much, Kat. Thoroughly enjoyed it.